writer for the Los Angeles Times business section, and I write the Hot Property column, which you may see every Sunday in print or throughout the week online. Love to talk about the celebrities and their homes and get a little bit more in depth by consulting a real estate professional. This week we have Max Nelson of DZ Pinner and Partners. Welcome. Hi, Lauren. Thanks for having me back. My pleasure. Great to have you back. I was hoping you were available this week because I know you know Hancock Park well, and that's the item we're leading off with this week, actress Patricia Heaton. Now, she is in a show called The Middle, uh, standing for the Midwest, and it's funny because this house seems like so far removed from the character she plays, and which is fine. She is actually uh, a star in real life. It's, uh, as I said, in Hancock Park. They're asking a million plus. I was surprised to see uh, in three weeks, they're already looking for a backup offer, so they're, they're in escrow and hoping it'll, it'll hold together. Yeah, they're actually asking 8.295, I, th I believe was the answer. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, it is, it is over eight. And uh, that's for 84,000 square feet. I just was blown away by the photos of this house. It's at the 1920s vintage, just gorgeous, stunning in so many ways, looking right for the period, uh, looking luxurious, and kind of looking dripping wealth. I was very impressed. Now, I have seen several things for Hancock Park recently in the column, but I haven't seen anything this expensive. Uh, how, price, how high do prices go there? Well, you know, it's interesting. It, it, it's the type of community where people actually buy there and they stay for a while, which isn't super characteristic of Los Angeles. So, for example, all of last year, Lauren, in Hancock Park, there were only five sales north of five, four million dollars. Wow. It doesn't mean that it's a soft market there. It's just there's not a lot of supply. Right now, even if you're in the market there for a property north of four million dollars, there's six houses to choose from. That's it. You know, it's just they don't come along that often. And I'll tell you, this did go into contract. Uh, uh, Patricia Heaton's home did go into contract after three weeks, and it went into contract with multiple offers. So it's highly likely that they fetched higher than that asking price. And I wouldn't be surprised if they got $1,000 a square foot or close to it, which is unheard of for Hancock Park and indicative of, of how spectacular this property is. It's really like having your own vintage Four Seasons property. That's the only way I can describe it. I mean, it's got park-like grounds, a screening room, it's got uh, a paddle court, it's just been meticulously restored and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, got, it's been extensively published. It's a really, really special property and it's close to 50,000 square feet of flat land in the middle of the city. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I guess because I knew that, that they were selling now in, in thinking, okay, kids are grown, perhaps a down, time to downsize, I was stunned because you could never tell a child ever lived in that home. It, it just has really uh, been done to the nines. It really shows a lot of pride of ownership. And Maybe the I, kids lived in the screening room. <laughs> okay, there you go. And I, I guess that explains why it went into escrow so quickly. But I have to say that this – this house blew me away, and we will have photos online. Um, I think there are ten, so people can can click through and and have a good a good look at the house. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then we move um, a little bit further towards the coast, uh, Pacific Palisades. We have a country musician, Brad Paisley, and he is looking to sell. He is uh, just under three million dollars. Also, similar vintage, nineteen twenties. I do love vintage homes. I looked at this home though and it, it struck me a little uh, country, which is okay. Um, yellow kitchen, felt, felt a little country, there's a red dining room, the living room and it has some gorgeous architectural details, but it's kind of bright white uh, walls, so it's, it's not the same kind of uh, restoration that uh, Patricia did that was so true to the period, it, 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 but this is in fine shape too. I was wondering about the prices there in Pacific Palisades, $3 million to be in. It's a very nice area. Uh, they have what uh, the listings love to call the peekaboo view, which is just a little view of the ocean. So how, how is he priced for his neighborhood? Well, he's priced well, but the, where I see, I, I would be concerned if I were him right now because of what you exactly what you said. It's like a Nashville house in the Palisades. And... 
there's not a tremendous amount of demand for that. You know, the, the typical Palisades house is a is is a Cape Cod with ebony dark ebony floors and a white kitchen, and that's exactly what this is not. And you know, on the, on, on the flip side, it's a highly desirable area of the Palisades. You know, you're walking distance to the village. It's got great schools. It's a really great community. But I think he's going to struggle just because of the style of the house and the way it's laid out. It's not exactly uh, compatible with your normal Palisades uh, profile, your normal Palisades buyer. Mm -hmm. I did love the exterior. I, it, has a, it has a certain charm to it. But I just felt that disconnect between interior and exterior just a little bit so yeah completely completely uh, oh wait, you never know when a big brad paisley fan's gonna come along and just want to buy it yeah and you know somebody from nashville i mean yep. but, you know when i when i realized it had a kind of country feel and i looked at it well of course it's brad paisley's house so yeah that makes sense now i'm gonna stay in pacific palisades for just a sec this was a little bit of a mystery to me i uh, found this in the public record a uh, lot that came on the market, also Pacific Palisades for $6.5 million, and discovered through my research that this is a, a Kurt Russell Goldie Hawn purchase. They had bought it in 2011 for $5.7 million. It looked like they maybe wanted to build something there themselves. They have torn down the existing home, but plans must have changed. It's back. So for Pacific Palisades, uh, can they get this $6.5 million with Basically, just saving you the trouble of tearing down the existing home and pool. Yeah, no, I, I think they're 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 also. I would be concerned if I were them as well, and I think they're going to struggle with this uh, with this uh, sale. Um, you know, they they graded the lot. They did they did the demo and the grading, and uh, uh, basically the problem with the asking price right here is, is you take the developers out of the buyer's pool because the margins aren't there on, on, on the back end. Even if you know with a six five ask, even if you were to get it for six or six two five it's gonna cost you a million and a half to two to build something you know substantial and appropriate for this location and I don't see you really getting more than eight or nine on the back end so it's kind of like you're banking on that one person or the, or the family that it's their dream site and they're gonna build something custom for them to stay in for 20 years and maybe pass on to their kids so um, I, I think they're gonna struggle yeah, I was wondering about that I've noticed they've had something for sale a, quite a quite a while in Malibu, and they don't seem in any real real rush. So looks like plans changed, and uh, they may be willing just to sit on it for a while and and see yeah. if they can get that one buyer. Yep, exactly. Now we're going to go a little south of Orange County, out of both of our areas, but I uh, was curious to see that uh, Bob Costas uh, bought a place in Newport Coast, very nice community, lots of big names down there. Um, NBA player Tory Hunter and a few others. I think Kobe uh, Kobe had a place down there. Yeah, yeah, he did. And um, uh, actually, I think he has another place down there that he's been building too. But mm. uh, he spent four point seven million. I'm really not familiar with with what I you know what it costs to get in there. How did he do? Do you have any any idea? Well, you know, and I, and I have to preface this by saying this is not my area of, uh, of specialty, and I don't have a tremendous amount of experience there. I, I did go to the South Coast Plaza once, uh, so <laughs> I can tell you that. Um, I know it's a, it's a great community. It's a gated community. Uh, it's called Crystal Cove, which, you know, sounds like something out of Pirates of the Caribbean. And he paid a little over $1,000 a square foot for the property. I, it's my understanding he got it fully furnished as well, but it seems a little high to me, honestly, based on I, I did a little noodling around and I saw, you know, what other things were going for. It did seem a little high, but you know what, if it's exactly what he wanted and it came fully furnished, turnkey, he's a man on the move, maybe it was just uh, worth paying that price to be done with it. Yeah, and, and there'll be lots of Olympics ahead so he can he can pay off that mortgage if he, if he took one at all. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I have another um, Pacific Palisades house in the column, but we're not going to talk about it because I uh, uh, still like people to read. I'm so old-fashioned. But uh, the old Ronald Reagan house sold for over asking, so that'll be for the readers among us. And then the column's going to end with uh, Toluca Lake Home, which has long been a haven of stars, Bob Hope among others. 
and Scott Bayo from uh, Chachi and Joni Loves Chachi Days. Yeah. He helped his mom sell her place there, $3.15 million. How did they do um, for that house? You know what? They did really well. What, what, they, what they didn't do well was gauge the market because it took them two and a half years to sell the property, Lauren. I'm not sure you're aware of that, but they actually came to market two and a half years ago for like $4.9 yeah. I thought which, it had been a long time, yeah. Which is absurd. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they just kind of grinded it out and grinded it out. And, you know, they finally closed at 315, which is $284 a square foot, which is a really nice number for the buyer. But I got to tell you, Chachi did all right, too, because basically they paid 1.3 and change for the house in 1994, probably with some of that Charles in charge money. And, uh, you know, so, so there's a plenty of margin there. And, uh, Whoever bought the house, though, they have an opportunity to restore it and do a really, really quality remodel in this area where I think when they're done with the work, they may be able to get five. Yeah, and again, you we're talking about a nice area, and I think that, that matters so much in these homes. You can, you can fix up a really nice house, but if there's a problem with the location, you're always going to be held back. So Yeah, you're right. And, you know, at the end of the day, Lauren, it's, I mean, it's 11,000 square feet. I mean, it is a substantial uh, uh, property, and, uh, you know, I think the value is really good. Yeah, that that's, seems like a lot of house for $3 million, but maybe I'm becoming jaded. Yeah, no, no, you're right. You're absolutely right. You know, it's similar to the, you know, the Allen Thick estate that, that, that traded a, a, a few months back over in that area, too, you know, so. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that wraps this uh, week's column. That was pretty quick. And always love to have you, particularly uh, giving me the little insight in Hancock Park about the multiple offers. Very interesting. And I'll be very curious to see what Patricia Heaton got for that. So thank you for coming, and we'll be sure to have you back again soon. Thanks a lot, Lauren. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.